Here to accept the award for Hearts of Darkness is the former neighbor of 2020, President Chris Christensen. The last time Chris saw our guest was crawling under their apartment to shut off the gas after the Northridge quake of 1991, so assuming he got out just fine. Also one of the writers from TV's In Living Color, the executive producer of Mad TV, and one of the directors of tonight's winner, Hearts of Darkness. Please welcome one of Hearts of Darkness's directors, Fax Bar, everyone. Fax, come on up. <laughs> something anyway. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to thank the Academy uh, not for not actually nominating Hearts of Darkness, because my odds of winning would have gone way down. But um, uh, I'm really, really happy to be here. This is such a great idea. Uh, films uh, seem so disposable nowadays, and it's heartening to see, that, see a bunch of film lovers with the foresight to put, put uh, such passion into, their, into hindsight. So um, revisiting film is always worthwhile, and ironically, it's what Hearts of Darkness uh, was all about. <clears throat> so I'm honored uh, that you guys have considered it, and it's heartening to know that uh, people think the film still holds up. Um, Hearts of Darkness, <clears throat> of course, mostly belongs to Eleanor Coppola. Uh, I actually contacted her about coming here tonight. She wasn't able to make it. She's in Europe. but. Um, I'm afraid you're stuck with, with me and my story of, of the making of the film. <clears throat> so uh, in order to get a better understanding of our film, I thought it would be helpful to explain how it is that I got involved. So way back in 1988, uh, I was kicking around some ideas with a producer friend, George Zaloon. And he told me that he'd just read uh, Eleanor Coppola's notes, which was her journal, journal that, she, that she wrote during the making of Apocalypse Now. And he said, um, you know, throughout this book, she keeps talking about all this footage that she was shooting on the set. And have you ever seen any of this footage? And I said, no, I've never even heard about it. And uh, so um, he gave me a copy of the book, and I read it. And it had three in things that were just incredible for me. One was Apocalypse Now. I was a huge fan of that, a huge Francis Coppola fan. And third was um, Heart of Darkness that Apocalypse Now was based on. was one of my very favorite books. So George and I knew we had to get our hands on that footage. <clears throat> Zaloom went, uh, went about making contacts up at Zoetrope, and I wrote a proposal. Um, and in February of 89, we finally got our meeting up in San Francisco. And <clears throat> here's an excerpt from my pitch. It's so pretentious, but uh, <laughs> sorry. But uh, this was 20 years ago. <clears throat> um, Inspired by Heart of Darkness, John Milius set out to explore the tale of an obsessive journey into the deepest recesses of the human soul. From Ms. Coppola's notes, it is evident that each and every person who endured the apocalypse experience went through a tremendous personal journey as well. <clears throat> through the narrative frame of the film, the journey of Willard through Kurtz, there's a clear parallel to the journey of the filmmakers. Marlowe, Willard, and Coppola certainly were on a kindred mission. It is this obsessive journey to the very heart of the filmmaker that we want to document. Uh, Zoetrope was not impressed. <laughs> they, were, they were very skeptical. And um, they told us uh, really pretty, pretty bluntly that they thought the footage wasn't very good. Ellie, Ellie didn't really know what she was doing. She wasn't in the room at the time. But they said the footage is out of focus. And so they said, if you want to take a stab at it, we've tried a couple times to put this stuff together. Go for it. But there's a ton of footage. Go and go, go look at it if you'd like to, which of course we did. And we got a flatbed and we uh, strung up a couple of reels of the 16 millimeter footage and instantly we knew this was absolute gold. That she had been, she, she'd been there pretty much every day on the set shooting film and it was extraordinary stuff. So we were, we were thrilled. <coughs> um, uh, so we took those, some reels down, I cut a sizzle reel, we took it around town in, in LA and uh, eventually sold it to Showtime. <coughs> um, so Zoetrope sent down all these boxes, and it was, you know, a truckload full of boxes. There was so much footage, so many logs, so much, you know, copies of the, of the film and, and, and 
so forth. And um, I you know, set about unpacking all these boxes. And at one point, I came across this unlabeled shoe box. And so I opened it up, and it was filled with these audio cassettes that weren't labeled. They just had dates on them, assuming I assumed that they were the, the dates that they were, that they were uh, recorded on, that they were recorded. And so I took out a tape, wondering what this was, and I popped it into the tape deck in the editing room and hit the play, hit play, and out came this ins insane, intensely anguished voice. It was Francis, like you heard up on the clip there, uh, venting. And <clears throat> I learned later that Francis had decided that there was a new way of communicating on film where everybody would get a cassette player and everybody would get a stack of cassettes and whenever you had a note, you would say, your, say whatever it is you were thinking into a cassette and you would give your cassette to a PA and the PA would run it over to somebody else and they'd put it in their deck and they would listen to it. And <laughs> that, that method of communication didn't really last. But anyway, thank God he did it because Ellie would just... Late at night, obviously, when they were alone, she just set the tape recorder out and hit record, and he would go off, like you saw on the, uh, on, on the clip there. <clears throat> so, um, uh, it was just riveting. Uh, it, it, was, it was absolutely stunning to me, because it was really this artist, this inner monologue, this artist in the throes of an incredible crisis making the biggest film of his career. Or his, you know, the, 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 the I don't know, the most difficult film of his career. Um, so here it was, it was the personal journey that we were after. It was uh, this man filled with fear and panic, uh, and it was a once in a lifetime front row view into the mind of an artist in the middle of this crisis. I knew I'd find the, found the heart of the film as soon as I heard that, and only Ellie could have had access to that unguarded Francis Coppola, and she was the only one that Francis could be honest with and could trust. So, in conclusion, uh, I want to th thank Ellie, of course, and Francis, and thank uh, the, syn the syndication, the syndicate, <laughs> syndicate. <laughs> A little sinister uh, <laughs> uh, for for honoring this film and uh, especially Chris. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, your your um, your contacting me and, and uh, telling me about this. And, uh, and um, I love this festival. This is just a really fantastic thing. <laughs> Obviously, looking back at film is something that Hearts of Darkness was all about, and it's something that I love. So it's great. You guys keep going, and I hope to come back every year. And I guess it'll be hard to win for something 20 years ago. But. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And this will definitely go on my. <laughs>